James McNeil Whistler went to Venice in September of 1879 with a commission from the Fine Arts Society Commercial Gallery to do 12 etchings in the course of three months to be able to come back and sell them for the Christmas holiday. Whistler struggled when he got to Venice with what would be new, working with the idea of Venice having been a great tourist site for the previous 200 years, an artist capturing the great monuments of Venice, people like Canaletto and Guardi, Turner and Bonington. Whistler wanted something new. He wanted something different, something that reflected his own time. And it took him a little while before he could realize that ambition. We know that he had several different tactical approaches. One was to avoid the major monuments, the Grand Canal, the Rialto Bridge, Piazza San Marco and the Basilica of San Marco. But another was to capture the immediacy of being on the spot. In this sense, he was the heir to Courbet and realism, that artists had tried to capture contemporary Paris and contemporary London. Now he goes to Venice, and what he wants to capture is the lives of contemporary Venetians, a Venice of the Venetians, as he said, Venezia minore, minor Venice. So he wants to go to back alleys, small canals, courtyards, the places where life takes place to get the optical idea of Venice. Well, part of the spontaneity came from working directly on the plate, that idea of the inspiration of the moment and sketching directly on the plate. But he's working with printmaking. And when he's working with etching, working directly on the plate, because of the impressing of the print itself onto paper, the plate onto paper, we have a natural reversal, the creation of a mirror image of the plate. And therefore, if the artist doesn't take that reversal into account, the images produced are backwards. They're mirror images. Whistler felt that he didn't want his work to be simply seen as postcards as capturing tourist attractions. Instead, he wanted people to value it because it was Whistler and because it captured the immediacy, the spontaneity of being on the scene. That's what's happening here with this Riva number two. He's actually working from his uh, rooming house, the Casa Jankovitz. He's looking along the great quay, the great walkway, the Riva delle Schiavone, and he's looking along the great walkway from his rooms, and therefore, working directly on the plate, we know that this is in reverse of the actual scene. Here, the foreground, the wider area in front of his rooming house, the bridge, and then the long curve coming down here to the Piazza San Marco. However, the curve really should go this way rather than this way. It's a mirror image. He also worked on it at two different times of day. In the morning, when the light was behind him, these figures cast shadows that move away from us. That light would naturally lead us to believe that this area should also be in bright light, but in fact, that area was done in the afternoon. He's reserved a little bit of space back here so that you can also see his characteristic butterfly, his signature, which is made up of an amalgam of the JMW, his initials, James McNeil Whistler. The image itself gives a sense of being on the spot, of seeing the various different activities that Venetians are engaged in. And this would have tremendous ramifications for not only the other artists in Venice at the time, but the people that he would meet with when he got back and showed these works in 1880 and 1881, and then for future generations, including Ernest Roth and including Fabio Maroner. <laughs>